Desire of mind expresses its desire through the electric process of thinking. Thinking divides idea into pairs of oppositely conditioned units of motion, which record a simulation of idea into thought forms. Sir James Jeans has suggested the possibility that matter might be proven to be pure thought. Matter is not pure thought but it is the electric record of thought. Every electric wave is a recording instrument which is forever recording the form of thought in wave fields of matter. All thought waves created anywhere in any wave field become universal by repeating themselves everywhere. Thought waves of expanded and compressed states of motion are fashioned into moving patterns which simulate the forms of the Creator's imaginings. All formed bodies thus created are made in His image. This is a thought wave universe. Thought waves are reproduced throughout the universe at the speed of 186,000 miles per second. It is commonly believed that the incandescence of suns is light. Incandescence simulates light in this cinema universe of macrocosmic make-believe. But incandescence is not light. It is but motion. Incandescence is merely the compressed half of the one divided pair of opposite conditions, which constitutes matter and space. The black vacuity of cold space constitutes the expanded half. Together these two are as much mates as male and female are mates. Each is equally essential to the other. Each finds balance in the other by voiding each other's unbalance. These two conditions and directions of compression and expansion are necessary for the two-way interchange of motion which performs the work of integrating and disintegrating the living dying cycles of oppressed motion which this electric universe is. The incandescence of compressed matter and the black vacuity of expanded matter are the two opposite polar ends of nature's bar magnet. Nature does does not make her bar magnets in the form of cylinders as man does. She makes form of motion Oh, I'm not skipped a line. She makes them in the form of cones. In this radial universe, no other form of motion than the spiral forms of cones is possible. This means that the negative end of nature's magnet is tens of thousands of times larger in volume than the positive end, although the potentials of each end are, are equal. It also means that the equilibrium plane which divides nature's magnet is curved, while that same plane in a cylindrical bar magnet is a flat plane of zero curvature. The Coulomb Law, I think that's Coulomb Law Misconception. Did I come down too far? Let's see. No, I guess I didn't. Okay, the Coulomb Law Misconception. The Coulomb Law statement that opposites attract and likes repel is not true to natural law. Opposite conditions are opposite conditions. Likewise, they are opposite effects caused by each thrusting in opposite directions. It is not logical to say that opposites fulfill any other office than to oppose, nor is it logical to say that opposing things attract each other. In all this universe, like conditions seek like conditions. Gases and vapors seek gases and vapors by rising to find them. Liquids and solids seek liquids and solids by falling toward them. 
Radiating matter seeks a radiating condition in the outward direction of radiation. Gravitating matter seeks the inward radial direction of condensation to find its like condition. Opposite poles of a bar magnet thrust away from each other as far as they can go. That is the very purpose of the electric current which divides the universal equilibrium. If opposite poles attracted each other, they would have to be together in the middle instead of pushing away from each other to the very ends. When depolarization takes place, the poles seem to draw closer together, but that is because of their lessening vitality. They still thrust away from each other until devitalization is complete. When motion ceases, the matter which it manifests ceases to be. Scientific observers have been deceived by their senses into thinking that opposites attract each other because of seeing the north pole of one magnet pull toward the south pole of another magnet. The fact that opposite polarities void each other when thus contacted has not been considered as a factor in the matter. It is a fact, however, when two opposites are thus brought together by their seeming eagerness to contact each other, both poles cease to be. Each one has voided the other as completely as the chemical opposites sodium and chlorine void each other and leave no trace of either one after that contact. If the Coulomb law were valid, it would not be possible to gather together one ounce of any one element. This electric universe of simulated energy. In order to know more dynamically what electricity really is, I will define it. I will then amplify my definition by example. Electricity is an effect of strain, tension, and resistance caused by the energy of desire in the light of mind to divide and extend the balanced unity of the one still light of universal mind into pairs of many divided units of thinking mind. When electric strains and tensions cease to oppose each other, electricity ceases to be. Electricity is dual action reaction. When dual actions reactions cease to vibrate, electric effect is voided by the one universal condition of rest. Sound vibrations of a harp string are an electrical effect. The electrical vibrations of sound are a division of undivided silence. When sound vibrations cease, silence has swallowed them up by voiding them. The ideal of the silent harp string, note, eternally exists. Electrical division into sound manifests the ideal, but the ideal belongs to silence, and to silence it returns for reborning again as a simulation of ideal. The two electric pressures formed by the division of the universal equilibrium have separate offices to fulfill. The negative pressure expands to create space by dividing potential and multiplying volume. Conversely, The positive pressure contracts to multiply potential into solids by dividing volume. Electricity thus performs the work of the world by straining toward separation and multiplicity of units and also by relaxing from such resisted strains and tensions until motion ceases its vibrations by withdrawing into the universal stillness. The only work performed in this universe is the work caused by the strains and tensions of electrically divided matter in motion. Matter moves only to seek rest and balance. Matter neither repels nor attracts matter. All matter which is out of balance with its environment, volume for volume or potential for potential, will move only to seek rest in an equipotential environment of equal volume displacement. 
That is why air or ocean currents move, and for no other reason than to seek their lost equilibrium. And while they move, they will perform work, and the measure of their power to perform work is the measure of their unbalance. Earth's tides are not pulled by the moon. Curvature in the pressures of their wave fields which control their balance is the cause of that. And that explains why tides are thrust away from the face of the earth opposite to that of the, motion of the moon, as well as being thrust toward the moon on its near face. When tides rise, they will perform work, and they will also perform work when they fall. But work will cease being performed the moment the motion of either rises or, rising or falling ceases. Likewise, a waterfall will perform work while falling, but not when waters cease to move. A storage battery will perform work while being charged with increasingly high potential pressures which oppose each other, and it will perform an equal amount while it is discharging to seek the equilibrium pressure which will unite the divided two. When fully discharged, it will cease performing work because it has found balance in its zero and can no longer move. In a live electric battery, or in its chemical counterpart such as sodium and chlorine. There are three equators, the central dividing one being the fulcrum of the two extended ones. When the two extended equators of the live electric battery withdraw into their balancing one, the battery is dead. They have found their eternal stillness. Likewise, their chemical counterparts have ceased to exist as separate elements when they withdraw into their sodium chloride fulcrum. Even though sodium and chloride have disappeared, they still are, for they will as surely reappear as night will follow day. To recharge the battery, the one dividing equator has to be extended in opposite directions until there are again three before motion is possible. Motion is then not only possible, but imperative. The heartbeat of the universe is eternal. So long as the universal heartbeat continues, every divided pair and every unit of every divided pair will reappear to express life as surely as it will again disappear in eternal repetitions to express death. Work is not performed by the attraction of matter for matter, nor because of the condition of matter such as heat which is presumed to be energy, work is performed solely because the electric current, which divides a motionless condition into two unbalanced conditions, sets up two oppositely straining tensions of unrest, which must move to release those tensions. The Duality of Electric Effect No effect can be produced unless there is an equal opposite effect to work with it. Electrical workers are two, which, have, which move in opposite directions to perform that effect called work. Effect is therefore two-way, just as work is performed two ways. The two electrical workers are like two men on opposite ends of a double saw which pull and thrust in opposite directions from opposite ends to perform the work of sawing down a tree. Or they are like two compression and expansion ends of a piston, which pull and thrust in opposite directions sequentially to move and to perform work while they move in either opposed direction. Each end of the saw or piston is helpless without the other. Heat, for example, is one end of the cosmic piston cold is the other end. Just so long as these two conditions, conditions exist, the piston of interchanging motion will continue to expand and contract sequentially. When each has found equilibrium by voiding the other, motion will immediately cease and work can no longer be performed. Science says that cold is less heat, 
One might as appropriately say that female is less male, or that south is less north. Science says also that there is no compensating uphill flow of energy to balance its downhill flow. There is an uphill flow, otherwise a downhill flow would be impossible. Every wave is a compression expansion pump. The whole universe is a giant pump. The two-way piston of the universal pump constitutes the universal heartbeat. A one-way universe is as impossible as a one-way pump is impossible.